In meantime, in Washington, Indiana Senator Todd Young has made a number of headlines in recent days. He was a big part of the bipartisan CHIPS legislation that passed Congress last week. He also faced criticism for his initial vote against a bill to help veterans exposed to toxic burn pits before ultimately voting for that legislation. We heard from Young and his opponent, Hammond Mayor Tom McDermott, on a number of issues, from those we just mentioned, to the debate over abortion rights. Here's what Senator Young had to say about that debate playing out in the Indiana State House. They may get it right. They may not get it exactly right uh, in the beginning, but I want to support those legislators and state officials and, frankly, everyone involved in these, uh, these difficult conversations. But, you know, my lodestar as a citizen of, of this great state and someone at the federal level who deals with these issues is to make sure uh, that we do whatever we can to uh, protect all life and to support women and children. And um, I'll make peace with and accept uh, whatever principled compromises our legislators and, and citizens have to make in furtherance of that. Okay, right now I'm joined by Senator Young's opponents, opponent in this year's midterm, Hammond Mayor Tom McDermott. Thank you so much for being with us. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate being invited. What's your response to what Senator Young said there in that call with reporters last week and generally to the abortion debate that's playing out at the State House? It's a radical departure from precedent. And my lone star, using the senator's terminology, is protecting women's civil liberties. You know, I'm 100% pro choice, 100% pro woman. And if, if you're one of the Hoosier women, the, the 3.3 million Hoosier women that are upset about this, I want to remind you that Senator Young confirmed three of the justices that voted to overturn Roe versus Wade. You'd vote to codify uh, Roe v. Wade if elected to the Senate? I feel like I'm a senator for the women right now, and I'm going to be a soldier for the women, and I'm going to be a pro-choice senator, and that's going to be my lone star. Would you put any limits on, on abortion? Well, I mean, I... Roe versus Way worked, you know, and I don't want to dive into the details right now, but that worked. You know, nobody was really happy, and I find as mayor that the best deals are often the ones where everybody walks away a little bit upset. And Roe versus Way wasn't perfect, but it worked for my entire life, and suddenly that's been thrown out the window, and and that's a radical departure from precedent. I don't think it's right that the Supreme Court did this, and I don't think it's right that what Indiana is debating right now. I, I think it's wrong, and I think women are going to rise up and be upset about this issue, and something similar that happened in Kansas is going to happen in Indiana. Busy week there in the Senate with the climate and inflation bill. We'll have more with Young and McDermott here in the weeks to come. This week we're also talking about former Vice President Mike Pence who made an appearance in northern Indiana this past week to talk about inflation, but he also faced questions about the January 6th committee. Simon Bradley was there and filed this report on Tuesday. Former Vice President Mike Pence in Hobart, Indiana, helping motorists pump gas, trying to turn the page from the bombshell January 6th committee hearings. Today, his first comment since the committee wrapped up for the summer. As I said, January 6th was a tragic day in the life of the U.S. Capitol. But I know we did our duty that day. Despite testimony that the angry mob made it to within 40 feet of him and his Secret Service agents feared for their lives, Pence is not willing to condemn the actions of former President Trump. As he weighs a possible 2024 run for president, Pence has been crisscrossing the country, taking aim at Democrats. In June, he visited Chicago for a speech on the economy. Today, he appeared at Americans for Prosperity's latest stop, highlighting inflation during the Biden presidency. The group paid to temporarily lower the gas of a regular gallon to $2.38. According to AAA, the national average currently stands at 418, a buck more than a year ago. Gas is trending down, 60 cents from a month ago, but Republicans blame Biden for inflation. 238 is because that was the price of gasoline the day that our administration went off. In a statement, the Indiana Democratic Party called the hours-long gas subsidy a political stunt. Pence chases a headline, not a better future for Hoosiers, and it's why even Trump supporters no longer support him. And that was Tamon Bradley reporting there from Northwest Indiana. This week, Pence also put out a statement after the tragic death of Representative Jackie Wilarski. Pence said Wilarski served Indiana in the State House and the Congress with integrity and principle for nearly two decades and will be deeply missed. Stick around. We're back to wrap things up right after this.